What's up fam, my name is Phil Sarpon. Welcome back to the channel. This is Phil's Guide to PsyD. This channel is dedicated to all things clinical psychology. If you're interested in psychology, if you care about self-care and mental health, as well as if you want a little bit of a sneak preview into what grad school could look like for you, then this is the channel for you. Today we're gonna to be talking about 15 things, 15 things that you can do with a PsyD degree. And I'm so excited for this video guys, because honestly, I did not even know what a PsyD degree was until a couple of years ago. I mean, honestly, I did not know that clinical psychology, you could get a PhD and you could also get a PsyD. And so when I found out about the PsyD, I was like, man, this is perfect for me. This is exactly what I want to do with my career. What's even better is that once I became a clinical psychology doctoral student, I found out so many things that you can do with the PsyD degree, guys. And so in this video, 15 things that you can do with a PsyD degree. Here we go. All right guys, so the first initial things are gonna be pretty straightforward. These are gonna be things that you guys probably already know, but towards the later end of the video, I'm gonna throw out some things that you probably had no idea that you could do with a PsyD degree. So first couple things, number one, is of course you can do therapy. So yes, clinical psychologists, they're in the mental health field. They can do therapy. They can also do group therapy as well, right? So they can do one-on-one -on -one therapy. They can do family, couples and family therapy. They can also do group therapy as well. Next thing they can do is psychological assessment. Now, again, this is something that you probably already know, but they can also do a, a series of different psychological tests to confirm or not confirm a number of different psychological disorders or neurological diseases. So that could include someone that's coming in to figure out whether or not they have ADHD. That could include someone that's coming in to figure out whether or not they have dementia. That could include a number of different personality disorders, right? So they would go to clinical psychologists or neuropsychologists to figure out if they are actually diagnosed with a certain condition. And therefore, once they know what they're diagnosed with, once they know what they're working with, they can go forth and do some type of treatment that could include medication or some type of therapy or whatever the clinical psychologist feels best would be for that person in terms of their mental and emotional health. The next thing, number three thing that they can do is research. So yes, I know that you guys are used to PhD, clinical psychology PhD students doing all the research, but PsyD students and clinical psychologists that have PsyD degrees can do research as well. In fact, I know a lot of great PsyD programs that do research very, very well, almost basically just as well as any other PhD program. And I know a lot of professors and faculty members that have PsyD degrees, but are amazing, amazing in research. If that is something that you're interested in, if you're interested in the clinical therapy side, but you're also interested in the research side, don't shy away from PsyD programs because that PsyD programs could give you what you're looking for in terms of that research. And so once you get that PsyD degree, you can go into your own research lab, you can study whatever it is you wanna study. It could be stress or anxiety. You can get different grants from the government. You can you can basically commit your life to doing research. And so that's, that's really cool. If you're really into research, that's a really great positive thing for clinical psychology. All right, the fourth thing kind of aligns with the research side is that you could also become a professor. So you can teach an undergrad, you can teach psychology for undergrad students. You can also teach graduate students. You can teach doctoral students. So the nice thing about getting a PsyD degree, it allows you that wide landscape to become a professor in a number of different schools, whether it's high school, undergrad, college, graduate, or doctoral students. And so that's great. If you are really interested in teaching psychology, if you're interested in teaching clinical psychology, if you're interested in sort of the giving back and the mentorship side of psychology, then being a professor is awesome. All right, guys, number five is dependent on what state you're in. So clinical psychologists can indeed prescribe medication in terms of treatment. But again, it's not for all states, it's only certain amount of states. And honestly, you're not gonna be, most likely not gonna be taught this in your program. Once you get the PsyD degree, you'll have to probably get some other additional education, whether it's a certification or a program, an additional program that you do to become legally certified in order to prescribe medication. Now, this isn't gonna be some complex drug or anything like that you're gonna have to leave that up to your psychiatrist 
But in terms of general medication, this is something that you can do. All right, guys, number six is consulting. That could be, you know, if you're interested in sports psychology, there may be some sports teams that come to you in order for help in terms of locker room, toxic behavior. Organizations can come to you and, and say, hey, like we're really trying to get a better dynamic in terms of our employment and in terms of our team and in terms of our hiring. And we want the atmosphere here in our workplace to be healthy and to be productive. Can you come help us, right? And so I, I know a, a number of different clinical psychologists that go into private practice and become really successful and then they start their own little consulting firm and they start being consultants to other people that are interested in private practice. Now, number seven kind of goes into that, which is being a human resource manager. So again, like with clinical psychology, there's so many things you can do. And so if you like the human resource side, right? If you like being able to take, whether it's toxic situations and atmospheres and workplaces, and you wanna work with people that are coming with different grievances and different things, then human resources manager could actually be a, a wonderful opportunity for a clinical psychologist that has a society degree that cares about people, that is interested in human relationships and human dynamics, and is going to try and prevent prevent toxic relationships from happening. And if they do happen, they're going to try and do their best to mitigate them and to alleviate sort of that tension in that atmosphere. And so that could be something that could be really, really cool if you're interested in the whole corporate world and are looking into managing people as well as being more on the human resources side of people and helping people. All right, guys, number eight, which is a really cool thing. This is where we start getting to the things that you may not know. So psychologists can also create psychological tests. Now, again, that might seem pretty straightforward, but when you think about a number of different psychological tests that have come up, you will be able to get a certain amount of training with a PsyD program where if you decided to delve into working on those psychological tests, perhaps you could partner with faculty members, perhaps you could partner with a company or a corporation. There are a number of different creative avenues that you could go into to create more psychological tests that could better help people in terms of their mental and emotional health. That could be really, really cool because you could perhaps possibly even plant your name on a test that goes nationwide that now every psychologist is using when they take care of people, or when they're trying to diagnose something. And so that could be really cool, especially if you're interested in the stats, you're interested in the research world, creating different psychological tests and handling that format could be really cool for you. The next thing, number nine is life coaching. So this is a, uh, obviously pretty straightforward too. Life coaching is something that is giving people life. Like honestly though, like there are people that are looking into life coaches to help them with their life. And as a psychologist, yes, you are trained to help people with their mental and emotional health, but with that comes uh, a number of different skills that you could also help people in terms of self-improvement and life skills and life coaching. And so what's great is that there's a number of different life coaching certifications out there that make you go through a program, make you get certified, which is really, really important. Even if you're a psychologist, I personally think that you should also get certified as a life coach. But it's really, really cool because a lot of those skills are probably gonna be skills that you already know, that you already do in your psychotherapy clinical sites. And what's even better is that you can bring in a special perspective of what you know about psychology and the psychological mind and actually implement that with life coaching. So it could go hand in hand and it could be a really awesome combination in order to help people. Next thing, all right, number 10, you could be an author. Write your own literature, write your own papers. You can write a, a number of different books. I mean, for my psychology, psychology program, I mean, the, the number of books that I read of, of psychologists, I mean, that those are psychologists that have basically committed their whole life to writing and researching that book, that textbook that I'm reading for my class. And so if you like writing and you like, again, researching and, and studying things out and teaching people, then becoming an author and becoming an educational author, either for a school, even independently, maybe you write your own bestseller. Number 11. All right, so the next number 11 is gonna be industrial organizational psychology. Now, if you guys haven't heard about this, this is a really cool career. It, it kind of goes into the consulting side, but it's, it's 
it's more of an independent contractor. And so as an independent contractor psychologist, again, you're working with corporations, you're working with organizations, and you're basically doing what you do best in terms of psychology knowledge uh, to help their company. That could be with creating certain things to help people become more productive in their workplace. I mean, again, like I said, corporations love psychology. They understand that psychology is something that they can use to really take themselves to the next level. So they're gonna hire a number of different industrial organizational psychologists to help them with a number of different things in terms of the workplace. Number 12 kind of goes along with this is that there are psychologists that are working with I. Guys, this is kind of mind blowing, but when you really think about it, it actually makes sense. You know, AI is, is something that's becoming a little bit more prevalent in our day and age. I mean, it's gonna be something that 20, 30 years from now, you know, technology is going to continue to grow and develop and become smarter and smarter and smarter. There's gonna be a number of different things that we as a world are gonna to have to figure out in terms of the ethics and all this other stuff. And what better group of people equipped to handle that stuff. You know, there's actually a number of different companies where psychologists will work with machines and they'll work with people and they'll try and figure out how the people and the machines coexist together. So that this is something that's new. You may have not heard about it, but I do believe it is going to be a thing within the next 10, 15 years where psychologists are working with AI, they're working with intelligence, they're working with computers, they're working with technology in terms of the development and how they coexist with people in a number of different fields in a number of different ways. The next thing, number 13, is that a clinical psychology PsyD degree could help you create a social media platform kind of like YouTube, right? You know, there's a lot of psychologists that were working full time in their clinical practice and they decide to go straight into YouTube or they decide to go into Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. They decide to become an entertainment personality. All right, guys, the next two things. So the next thing is you can be a clinical director. This is actually, I, in my opinion, really, really cool. Being a clinical director means that you are sort of a director of a mental health facility. And so you are charged with being able to supervise people. So if there's clinical psychology students coming in, you're charged with helping them in terms of knowing how to be a psychologist. You know, you are also in charge of just making sure things are running smoothly. So this is more of the management side. This is more of the healthcare administration side. And the last thing guys, last Last thing guys is number 15 and it's honestly, I call it sky's the limit. Honestly, sky is the limit. I know clinical psychologists that are the deans of universities. There are clinical psychologists that are the presidents of companies and universities. Like at the end of the day, I think what's really cool with the SATI degree is like I said, the really is the sky's the limit in terms of what you want to do with your degree, what your interests are, what your passions are, what your focus is, what population you want to work with, how you want to help them, what other certifications you want to get in order to help them. Like there's a number of different things and who knows? I mean, who would have thought that if you went into a SATI degree, you could end up becoming a president of a school but again it just shows you that the realm of psychology can be applied in so many different fields and so many different things and depending on the school you go to depending on the people you meet and the people that you connect to and the road that you go down you could really make this career into what you want to make it and so that was really the whole purpose of this video it was I wanted to hopefully give you guys a little bit of an insight a little bit of a of a, a dream uh, of, of what clinical psychology could actually be all right guys, so that was what I wanted to talk about for this video. If you guys like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you already haven't, and I will see you guys in the next video.